Testing. One, two, three. Ah, uh, hi. It's so good to finally meet you. I'm Nigel, your park supervisor and head of zoological developments here at Prehistoric Kingdom. Since our last park manager moved to the Americas division, this place has fallen into a bit of a state. Unfinished plans, neglected habitats, all telltale signs of a much needed makeover. As I'm sure you know, our zoos are a little different, so it's perfectly normal to feel overwhelmed at first. After all, it's hard for most people to imagine what dinosaurs look like, let alone manage them. We're here to change that, and I reckon this will be second nature for you in no time. Right, first things first. I'm sure you're ready to meet our friend down there, so let's make sure you can look around. I'm sending some input controls to you now. Great stuff. Let's check some auxiliary functions. Try enabling your light. And that's why we don't like flash photography. Next, we'll get you on the move. I'd like you to look around the park for a bit and get comfortable with your surroundings. Feel free to mingle with the guests or enjoy some of the creatures on display. I'll check in with you soon. So hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with a Prehistoric Kingdom video. Now Prehistoric Kingdom finally released into early access earlier today and I have been having a little bit of a play around in the tutorial and it is just incredible. I have been looking forward to this for so so long. This game is seriously amazing and I yeah I've been waiting for it for so long. It's just so cool that it's finally here. Now, I'm not going to be talking much during this video because we will have Nigel Marvin narrating in-game for most of it, which is just so nostalgic to hear Nigel Marvin talking about dinosaurs and I just absolutely love it. This is just incredible. It is as incredible as it was when I first played the alpha and so much more. I just absolutely love this game. But like I said, I'm not going to be talking for much of this, so I will shush now and let you guys enjoy the rest of the tutorial. All right, I hope you're ready to get your hands dirty. To start, you'll need to investigate a welfare issue in the paddock from earlier. Caring for the animals should be your number one priority here at Prehistoric Kingdom. If they're not happy, no one's happy. Select one of the animals in the habitat so we can take a look at them. Okay. So this is a Dryosaurus. This little fella's a small herbivore from the Jurassic, and it looks like their herd needs our help. When tackling a welfare issue like this one, you can expand headers inside the animal's info box to learn more about the problem. Try clicking on the sustenance and enrichment labels. Great work getting the Dryosaur paddock up and running again. The board and I really appreciate you stepping up to get this place back on track. When you're ready, I'd like you to head over to the old construction site. Next, we're going to get ready for a new attraction. I've already sorted the food and enrichment but I'll need you to do the rest of the heavy lifting. Let's prepare the area by building a generator nearby. Mm. 
Next up, I'd like you to build an animal nursery in that area there. Nice job. Select the nursery and open the genetics lab from the pop-up menu. In case you haven't already realized, this is where the magic happens. Today, I'd like you to incubate a Torvosaurus. Quite a fearsome looking fella, isn't it? In here, you can find everything you'd need to know about managing an animal. Exhibit requirements, social needs, diet, you name it. You can even change how an animal looks, assuming you've discovered all the genetic material. Here, try changing its appearance. Did you notice the species name changing? Some animals, like the Torvosaurus, have a handful of species to pick from, changing their needs, size, appearance, and even star rating. Once you're happy with your selection, press the Create button at the bottom. While we wait for our new dinosaur to incubate, we'd better go and prepare that new habitat. Secure fencing is of utmost importance, especially for a predator. Open the enclosures category and choose a fence type. You'll want to cover the entire perimeter. Now, with all that sorted, it looks like it's time to release the specimen. A beautiful animal indeed, but of course it's still going to need a proper environment, something to make it feel like home. Plenty of vegetation, a lake and a shelter should do nicely. So whilst we make this exhibit a little bit nicer for this Torvosaurus, I just want to talk about a couple of things. Firstly, how easy these different tools are to use for the landscaping. All of these terrain modification tools are just so nice and simple to use and they just feel so smooth when you actually do use them. It's really, really nice. And I remember that that was one of the things I really liked during the alpha and it's still definitely a thing here in the early access. Now, placing water is a little bit interesting at times, but again, you've just got so much freedom over like your different controls here that you can do so many different things and it's really easy to create these exhibits the way you really want them to be. 
And the same with using the fencing tool. You don't have to fight against the fencing tool or and it doesn't feel like blocky or anything like that. It's just so smooth and easy and instinctive to use. You just know exactly what you've got to do and it just feels nice to use. And I think that that's something that gets overlooked in park builder games is, you know, how nice these tools feel to use, whether they feel smooth to use, which you, as you can probably see here, they're just so simple and it's perfect. I really, really do appreciate how nice all these tools are to use. And I will say that for so, so long because it's going to make making cool exhibits so much nicer. When you can drag a fence and make it however long you want and whatever angle you want and it's not constantly fighting against you. And with same with the terrain tools, when you can just sort of do it and there's not a hundred different things trying to tell you not to do it that way. It's just very, very satisfying. Now, something else I have to talk about is the models for the dinos and the prehistoric creatures in this game. They are just so freaking good. They are just are incredible. Every time, it's they're just fantastic. I cannot be more happy with how the animals in this game actually look. It's just so, so cool. And especially like the fact that you can have the different skins is really, really awesome. And they all look really beautiful. And having that sort of choice of what exactly you want for your different exhibits is really nice. The thing that's always struck me about Prehistoric Kingdom is how much freedom they give you and all the tools that they give you to create exactly what you're looking for in your prehistoric park. And I absolutely love that. The fact that it's not constantly fighting you, like I said, with the tools, with doing different things is just really, really nice. And I can't overstate how how much of a difference the quality of this game actually makes to playing it and being able to use these tools in such a, a simple and smooth way. When it doesn't feel like the system in the game is constantly fighting against you, it just makes it so much nicer to play. And I really feel like the devs of Prehistoric Kingdom have absolutely nailed this. And it's something that it just feels addictive. You want to go and you want to try more and you want to see what different things you can create using these tools. And even just looking at the terrain tools and, you know, sort of blending in the different terrains here, it just looks so nice and so natural. And everything about this game just screams quality. That's my honest opinion. And I, like I said, I've been excited for this game for such a long time. And I really do think that it shows how much work has actually been put into this game. The fact that it's taken quite a while to go go through development, it shows. And that's the biggest thing that I'm happy about, is how much quality is in this game. And I feel like there can be so many incredible creations. And honestly, I can't wait to get on and start with my actual park once we've finished the tutorial, I'm definitely going and starting to build a park and I'm really excited with all of the possibilities. There's so many different themes and the fact that it's not just dinosaurs as well. That's something I've always found such an intriguing part of Prehistoric Kingdom. The fact that we're going to be able to have mammoths and saber tooths. I think it just adds so much possibility. And I know I, I'm probably sounding like a broken record when I say possibility, but I really do mean the possibility. There are some incredible park creators out there, which I cannot wait to see what they do with this game because I think there's going to be some incredible things out there. And even just using this tool here for the different vegetation and the trees, it's so cool that you can select like the density, exactly what different plants you want in there. It's just, again, something that's so simple and so easy to use. But instead of having to place every single tree and rotate them and make them all look random, you can use this tool and it gives you quite a nice natural looking sort of set of vegetation, which is something that I think a lot of games struggle with is making things look natural. But this really nails it. Like all these trees, once you use the different tools and place them down, they look really, really good. And like I said, you can change the size, the density. It's really awesome. I'm so, so happy with this. And honestly, like I said, I cannot wait to go and start building some proper exhibits. So let me know, guys, if you want to see some more videos of this. And I will now leave you to watch the rest of the tutorial. Wonderful job. If that Torvosaurus could smile, I reckon it would. 
You can assess how well designed an exhibit is by clicking on the perimeter fencing. Go on, give it a try. The higher that exhibit scores, the more likely our visitors are to donate to the habitat. As you can see though, visibility isn't too great. There must be something we could build. Great thinking. With binoculars, guests are able to see significantly further into an exhibit. The more visibility coverage, the better. Speaking of visitors, we should make sure the viewing area has sufficient guest facilities. Superb! That will keep them both well fed and entertained. All that's left is to connect the paths and let guests find our latest attractions. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Take a look at that. The park's star rating has increased. Let's see how this kingdom is doing, shall we? Ha! Huh, I haven't seen guest satisfaction numbers that high in a long time. You're a natural. Let's try visiting the animals page. As I suspected, everyone in the park seems to be doing great. However, it does seem a little dinosaur heavy, no? I think it's time for one final attraction, the Woolly Mammoth. Head on over to Excavations. We should have a dig site ready to go in Siberia. Great! Let's head back to the nursery and get started on those mammoths. While they're incubating, we should prepare their new home. There's a paddock ready nearby, but it's filthy from housing a previous occupant. First, let's correct those feeders. Set up one to stock plants and the other to stock fruit. If animals aren't eating high quality food, low nutrition could lead to weak immune systems and excess animal waste. <sighs> Looking at the state of this paddock, 
it appears the previous park manager wasn't particularly mindful of that. Feces, scat, however you wish to refer to it, will always be something we need to manage. I know it's not exactly what you signed up for, but we need to get all that dung removed. And, well, only one of us is out in the park. So... As the park grows, you'll find it harder to micromanage each habitat. For that, you'll need help from some teensy tiny employees, dung beetles. Their nests are essential in automating the disposal of feces. So let's put a few in now. I think that just about does it. The paddock looks cool, pardon the pun, and everything appears to be in tip-top condition. Now, if you wouldn't mind doing the honours, I believe we're due for some arrivals. There they are, Mammuthus primigenius trumpeting in the snow for the first time in nearly 4,000 years. There's something distinctly beautiful about Ice Age megafauna. Their ability to thrive in the harshest conditions is something I believe we should all strive to admire. Today you've helped give something back, not just to our park, but to the world. Ah, uh -uh. sounds like that will be for me. We're all done here for today, but I'm really glad to know the park will be in safe hands. From now on, it's all up to you. Talk soon.